Hello, everyone. I am Brett Gelman, uh, actor and <laughs> moderator, uh, interviewer today. And uh, let's give a round of applause for Janixa Bravo, writer director. Your your mic is better looking than I know. Mine. It's more tricked out. It just I feels think. like a little bit like your next level, and I'm just like, where am I? It's a weird. <laughs> it's a very weird. Uh, it's fine. I I can live with it. Hi, I'm Janixa mean, Bravo. I don't know. Socially, politically, it doesn't feel right to it me. It feels off, actually. Yeah. Should um, we? Can we switch? Is that no, okay? No, I'm just kidding. Um, hi. Thank you guys so much for coming on this evening and watching. Uh, some short films that I wrote and directed and edited, and that's really nice of you to be here with me and, yeah. and Brett. Yeah, so no, uh, with you though, this is a celebration of your work. Thank you, I feel celebrated. In, in the short uh, film uh, medium. Uh, so yeah, let's, uh, let's start at the beginning with you. We should, we're together by the way, yeah, like we're, mar we're married. So it's like, <laughs> Just so everybody knows, I'm so gonna be like, like so <laughs> aggressive. Um. Yeah, so if she gets mad at me several times during this interview, it's fine, it's normal. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, it was amazing to watch uh, your films again. Films that you've been forced to watch like a million times. I've never been forced to watch oh, that's them. that's kind. Thank you. I appreciate I it. I think uh, you're my favorite director and uh, would be so even Aww. if we weren't together. Uh, no, I mean, I really think that, you know, watching these, it's just like, you're amazing. Nobody's, nobody does what questions. you do. Okay, so, fine. Thank you. Jesus. Doesn't like compliments. Um... <laughs> So let's start out uh, at your beginning as a human being. You know, where are you from? Oh, where were you born and raised? Going early, okay. Uh, I mean, are we going too early here? Yeah, I feel like we should just talk about the films. But I'll, I mean, uh, pretend that's how I would do I'm it. I'm just an interviewer. Okay. Here. <laughs> I mean, that's just how personally I do it. But okay. I, well, okay. You, you went to NYU. I went to NYU. That's a great place okay. to start. Yeah, I we'll start went at to NYU. NYU. Uh, that's where I received my training, and uh, I went to theater school, not film school, and I say that because theater school was great. Um, and I uh, studied directing and design at a studio called Playwrights Horizons. Uh, and when I graduated, I was directing theater in my free time. I don't know if anybody out there knows it's really hard to make a living as a theater person because um, there's so much cash in that space. Um, and so I was, I had day jobs and I'd save money and I would fund my own experimental theater. And, uh, and then I eventually kind of, for my day job, moved into doing styling and costuming and I did that for about eight, nine years. And uh, six years ago, yeah, six years ago, I moved into uh, directing for camera. Yeah. And obviously theater and costume design and design in general, I mean, are some incredible influences on your work i mean that is correct yeah <laughs> how so how so do you uh take the theater and approach film in your work when i was directing theater i the, that space had always felt incredibly cinematic to me it's my favorite i feel like all of my films are just like an audition to like go back to theater but to be paid to direct it um and uh, I feel the work feels, to me, incredibly theatrical. Most of it's shot proscenium. There's not a great deal of coverage. Uh, the world of, while each of the films feels sort of different, I think they also feel similar. It's kind of interesting to watch them all together because I've never done that. And, um, and they're mostly in sequential order, kind of. They're not. I don't know why I said that because they're just not. Um, but the, there is this kind of, there's an aesthetic and an aural through line from each, even if the worlds feel slightly different. And as far as the kind of like theatrical influence, there's a sort of distance from the work and they're, they exist in this uh, absurd kind of plane and, 
it felt at least very close to the theater that I was directing, which was physical and experimental. And so I feel the work to me um, has like an absurdist theater quality. And by distance, you mean that absurdity? Oh, I, I'm talking just like camera distance, actually, like a kind of allowing the work to sort of play out. I mean, you've been in uh, some of those films and, you know, I like really long takes. And in my fantasy, like it would be a world of like almost no coverage and just being able to shoot things in this way that uh, I've uh, I personally really enjoy performance in that way, like having minutes, you know, in in Gregory, for instance, um, there is the scene in bed with the girl who brings him home. And uh, that scene is, I think, three and a half or four minutes long. And it's just played like that. And it, it I mean, whether or not you're OK with that movie, um, the, for the actors, uh, there was a vibe. Don't apologize <laughs> for it. <laughs> I lost my hat. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's just really funny to me. Um, anyways, but there's. Um, being disliked is funny. Um, anyways, uh, just kidding. But the, the, that scene is, I think, three and a half or four minutes long. And, uh, and I remember in terms of like watching that performance in the room, like behind camera at the monitor, uh, there was, it just felt, it, there was no other way for that to play. You know, it, it was so important for their performance, that arc, being able to get that beginning, middle, and end in, in one in one juicy uh, take. Now let's talk about the medium itself, short films, and yes. how you feel. Uh, how you feel that medium is different than other others, like other than a feature or other than television. Uh, I mean, I feel like, especially now, I I think that there is seems to be more respect for the space of short filmmaking. I feel when I had made my first and second short, there was often the question of like, is this a calling card or an audition to something bigger? And it was and it wasn't in that, yes, I wanted to be making a feature, but none of the shorts were like, this is the short version of the long thing. Like none, I, I have no desire to make any of these pieces longer than the, 10 to 15 minutes that they were. And so it was, but not directly that. And and I also say that I think for me, having not gone to film school, they felt very much like exercises, getting to work in a space that was pretty foreign to me and having a sense of, I'd been on set as a costume designer, but it was completely different. And so to be on set in that position, also going from writing, to directing, to editing, like sort of what the relationship is as a maker in all of those stages. I mean, you're kind of like divorcing yourself from each stage to like get to the next one. Uh, so I have no idea what your question was. Um, no, it's great. But you're I, answering there it, uh, I was in the sea and I didn't know what was no, going on. I mean, I'm passing you, I'm passing <laughs> you a, a ball question? here and you're... Um, what your feelings of on the oh short films more yeah. respect more respect in that space um and but there, I, yeah there's also there are more platforms where they're available I think for a while short films seem to only have a home in the festival circuit and then after the festival circuit I guess you would put it online and like hope for people that weren't your friends watched it. And uh, I think maybe also because people's bandwidths are really low or like our attention spans are low, like it seems like there's more room for making work that's under 20 minutes and people seem like excited by that. Uh, yes. Now let's talk about your influences because you have a specific take on design, a specific mm -hmm. take on photography, a specific take on writing. Your writing is is hyper real it's it's uh for lack of a better term it's not it's not colloquial and uh mundane and you know naturalistic it's it's as you call it hyper realism correct correct now what attracts you to that i mean theater but um what other filmmakers and designers and what aspect of design uh it, you know, do, d inspires you to to make the kind of work that you make? I feel like uh, that's a really good question. Um, 
there is not like a one single answer for it. So I'll answer it in the way that I want to. Of course. Okay. <laughs> um, I would say that the, the, the idea of inspiration or like why I've arrived in this space or like why I want to be making films. I mean, the work that I'm excited by, Cassavetes, Woody Allen, uh, Truffaut, uh, those were like the filmmakers whose film, whose early films I saw that for me something had kind of clicked in my brain where I felt I was being spoken to. Uh, as far as the the writing or the photographic influence, I feel photographically, film to film, there is, as you know, uh, I'm pulling references for each film to find the sort of like breadth of the piece, the color of the piece, the lighting, uh, the costume design, like each piece has its own sort of dense research. Uh, the last film we saw, Man Rots from the Head, there's this collection of photographs that were found by Diane Keaton, uh, that I'm not remembering the collection, but it was this book that I had bought uh, like six or seven years ago, and I really love the photos. They're like really stark, black and white, uh, really theatrical, and they're supposed to be, she bought like a cabinet at a thrift store, and in the third drawer there were like 200 photos of salesmen that are really strange. And then she did like an edited version of them that's awesome. But they're supposed to be, I think, like promotional or like encouraging for salesmen, but they're like, ter they're super scary. Uh, so I don't know like who they're for. Like the lighting is like half of a person's face is lit and it's like, are you your best? And you're like, who wants that? Like, it's terrifying. Uh, it's not inviting at all. Uh, but I saw them and I was like, I'm invited and I want to hang out in this space. So for that. And then as far as the writing, uh, again, I feel like piece of, I think, Almost all of the pieces seem sort of similar, except maybe for the last piece, which is like kind of trying to take from this like 40s, 50s space. And I was trying to emulate like what I felt that era felt like or that period. And then the other stuff, you know, I think it exists in like up that plane that I wish I, I wish I like had access to language in that way, you know, in the way that the characters speak. And it's like absurd, but it's also. Um, speaking from a place of like either exactly what your subconscious has to say. It's like this feeling of it, it, there's, it's unafraid, right? Like even if there's terror, like the language comes from a really unafraid place and a very honest place. And uh, there's something very innocent and childlike about that. And I, that's just the kind of language that I'm, I am attracted to that. Right, as you are attracted uh, Maybe to the Russians did that for me. Right. Yeah. It's like a Chekhov. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like that space. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Great. You like him. I like him. And, um, well, coming at it in that way and, and speaking of the subconscious and, and, and your perspective where you wish you were, you, you definitely are dealing with specific themes in all of your work and you're, uh, you're putting a, casting a light on those themes in mostly a, a darkly humorous way. So why don't you talk about that, about, you know, what... About sense of humor? <laughs> yeah, and the, the, th the themes of your work that drive that and how humor relates to those themes. Uh, the pieces you just saw, I believe, were dark comedies. Uh, I don't know if that's how you felt, but I felt that way. That was my feeling about them. And... Um, that's such a, it's a funny question. I don't know how to really answer that. Like how I arrived at my sense of humor or like how, uh, I'm not sure how to well, answer that. Well, what's funny about your pieces to you? Oh, wow. That's so weird. I Is feel that like, weird? No, no. But I, I hesitate to answer that because... Um, you don't want the audience. Well, I don't want anyone right. to feel wrong. And like, or there's no, not that I don't want anyone to feel wrong. I don't believe that there is a right answer to how the the stuff that I'm making should be processed or felt or experienced and in the way that I'm about to sound so pretentious probably have the whole time but like this time I feel like I'm really going to it's like the experience of like if you were to go to a museum and you were to watch a painting and you don't have the painter there to explain that to you so it's like your process and how you feel about it is right because it's how you feel and so I feel I uh, that is my opinion of the work like I think it's funny um, but I've watched it with people who disagree <laughs> and I've watched it with some people who do. I mean, it's, you know, it's, uh, 
it's a, it's kind of like a person to person experience. I would say the humor of the work. Yeah, I'd say that. Okay. And that's what Good it's chat. like working with you. <laughs> now, my last thematic question. Okay. So, you are a filmmaker of color. Oh my God, is that true? I mean, <laughs> you're <laughs> a woman of color. Here? You're a okay. woman of color. Uh huh. Um, the protagonists of these pieces are white. Mm hmm. What are you saying there? Because you have definite, very oh, strong perspectives in. on I race. I mean, how are in. we not going <laughs> to talk no, about like, that? Let's go in. Uh, uh, I mean, aren't you glad that I am? I am glad you're I mean, going I'd be in. really disappointing if I didn't bring that up as I your husband, I think. I wouldn't have critiqued it later, to be uh, honest. Yeah? I would have been like, you did a really good job. <laughs> I think you would have. I think you would have critiqued it. I might have it. critiqued like, other vibes, but not that. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that I've been like, did I touch my hair? Have I touched my hair a lot? Yeah, like stuff like that. Uh, okay, um, that's so, weird. So... Um, race. I yeah. am of color and the protagonists in these short films are not of color. Um, I've made eight short films, uh, seven narrative, one documentary, and uh, one, th those are all shorts, and then uh, one feature uh, that is coming out this summer um, that is called Lemon um, that stars Brett. Right. And, we, we and I say that just so that like we get a sense of it. And, um, and this is a question that I've been asked before that the very first time I was asked it, I think you were standing next to me and I was in Austin and it, I was there with my first short film, which did not play here uh, tonight, uh, that stars Brett and this other actress named Catherine Waterston. And, um, and I was really thrown by that question. It, like, it, it uh, like kind of fucked with my head and I've thought about it, I think about it all the time whenever I'm working. And, um, and I, I answered it fine, but it stayed with me. And the woman who asked the question was a woman of color. Um, and I remember feeling really uh, like kind of put on, on blast, so to speak. For those who don't know what that is, I'm not gonna explain it, but <laughs> feel that, feel it be in there. Um, and, and I was like, I was troubled also because right before she'd asked that question, there was this, uh, the film that I made, it's like kind of disturbing and Brett strangles this woman and and you know when I said I directed that, people were like, oh, oh. so there was like already I had like a lot of vibes going for me. Anyways, um, I, I've thought about that a lot, and um, and it's a question that is tough for me to answer because of this. It goes back to the thing of like saying too much about what the work is about, so that people then are like watching it through your own lens. Um, these pieces, all of these pieces, including Lemon, which is our feature, um, are an examination of whiteness. Are an examination of privilege are an examination of a kind of the assumed isolation that exists in like that space. They're like very much, um, for me, sort of anthropological pieces. Uh, there is race in all of the pieces. There is a conversation in race, whether or not like that's the first thing you're seeing, but they are in there. And the protagonist, while white and I am rooting for them, even if they're doing things that are unsavory. Um, my feelings are in all of the pieces, so my feelings can exist in the body, or in my perspective can exist in the body of a non-woman of color. Um, and so I feel myself in all of them, but the pieces in particular are this examination of race and privilege. Um, and as you know, I hesitate to sort of discuss that, not because I'm not, I don't feel like strong in my position about that, but I found with our feature, for instance, there was a writer from the LA Times who really loved our film um, at Sundance, and and he, uh, our film had also played at Rotterdam, and it was the opening night film there, and we were talking about like what the experience of that was, and the head of the festival had ran this Q and A, and like his opening question was like, "What is it like?" This is his accent. What is it like to make a film about privilege and mediocrity? And I was like, "Oh my god, we're just like, oh, wow." So I tell him that story, and he's like, "Well, but that's not what your work is about." And uh, and I was like, "No, it's totally about that." And then he stopped. We're on a dance floor, and he was like, "He's like, 
do you not like me? And I was like, no, no, it's not about you. It's like the, about these specific characters. And so, you know, I, I think the reality is this is the most diverse audience that I've ever seen in anything that I've directed, by the way. And predominantly, my the audience of most of my work that is played in festivals is predominantly white. And so to sit in front of a white audience and be like, um, I'm like exploring whiteness and privilege <laughs> is generally like not the most um, like inviting space to like hang out in is what I'm saying. So that's my answer. Well, yeah, and I, I, <laughs> I really, to be honest. I really love that answer because wait, you don't have I, that's not a part of it. You don't have to say how you feel about the answers. <laughs> it's not a part of it. You have to move on. Am I being privileged right now? <laughs> I think I am. Uh, no, I don't Wait, need to I make a point, I guess. It's not right? about me. Well, I, I wanted to oh. ask like a couple oh, other... Like okay, so we're on. off themes now. Okay. Um, Shit. Let's talk... So the, this has led to you making a feature. It's also led to television work. You directed an episode of Atlanta. I did. I directed an episode of a show called Atlanta that's awesome. And if you haven't seen it, you're silly. Um, it's superb. And not because I got to work on it, because even if I didn't, I would think that. But um, I directed one of the episodes of that. And, um, and I did an episode of a show called Love and an episode of a show called Divorce. Um, and that's me. Right. And so <laughs> how, how, has your, how did your short films lead into it uh how did how did it prepare you to make a feature and and make television and what were what were the differences if uh, there were any there are definitely differences you spend a lot more days on a feature um and Time. did you know that um <laughs> and uh i think that the the shorts were like such a wonderful exercise for everything and in fact like I even now I want to go back to I'd love to make more short films. I really like that space. I like the sort of quick high of it. I like uh, the uh, all of the pieces. I think all of them, except for the one that's like the couples having dinner, which we shot in like eight hours. All the others are three day shoots. Um, there's something like really satisfying about like getting in there three days, there's all this pressure. Everyone's there because they really want to be there, like everyone across the board. Um, and with a feature, it just takes longer. It took five and a half years to get the feature made. And um, it just, <laughs> none of the short films took five and a half years, thank God. Uh, and uh, and then as far as TV, TV is really interesting because you're stepping into like, another uh, ecosystem and you're invited into an ecosystem and you kind of have to figure out what your role is. I mean, you're the director, but it's also like figuring out when to push and when to, and when to sort of hang back and uh, when you're needed or not needed because sometimes you're just there to be the director for actors. Sometimes some shows want you to be more visual. I mean, Atlanta was incredibly inviting and really wanted my point of view. And um, and that felt more like working on my own stuff. Whereas working on both love and divorce were working on like other people's shows. I really felt that. I did not feel like I was stepping into my own work because the the there were just totally different mechanics and the scale of those jobs were also so different they had they had a lot of money <laughs> they were really big shows so yeah and you have a very specific relationship with actors and how, i explain your process with actors um did you just mouth boring <laughs> no i just i was kind of like shouldn't we just like take the audience's questions I was just like, this is... Talk about actors for a second. Okay, actors. We are at SAG after <laughs> Yeah, we after are at SAG after No, no, after I mean, of course. It's not that I don't want to talk about actors. I was just like, oh, it's just us. What is your process with actors? My process with actors, I don't... There is not... There isn't a... I mean, I feel like I should ask you that question, what your perception of that is, because we work together... Well, thank you so times. much. Uh, well, uh... <laughs> <laughs> I, because I, wait, I was gonna say because yeah. I've worked the most with you and with Michael, Sarah, um, who I think wait he's in two of the pieces tonight. Yeah, I was like, what is he in? So explain <laughs> your process specifically. Well, let's pick one role. What was your process with Michael on Gregory Go Boom? 
Um, my process with him was that short was inspired by a blind date that you and I both were a witness to. A man in a wheelchair was on a blind date with this woman. And uh, when she, the, the premise of the short is based on when she walks in, she looked at him um, like he was nothing or he was worthless. And, and I happened to be kind of in line with him, like where we were sitting. And I had remembered being looked at that way once myself, that feeling of um, just being so small in someone's eyes and being treated so insignificant because of a limitation that is like out of your hands. And so I wanted to make this piece that was about that, like the feeling of that gaze, the feeling of like not being considered and feeling totally invisible. Uh, and so how did that relate to Michael's <laughs> characterization? <laughs> um, and so with Michael, um, I really like gesture work uh, in general. I really love gesture work and, um, and we had talked about sort of like psychological gesture and and building on th on that for Gregory. As far as like the voice that he brought to the table, that was him. And um, and all I brought to the table was a gesture. <laughs> um, and uh, I mean, I brought some other ideas too. But um, so that I I think in that piece, um, he has like two gestures that he does. One's about like this thing with his watch and how he like turns his arm and then another thing is like something with like a, is everything okay? Yeah. Oh, okay, hi, how's it going? Um, and uh, yeah, so for example, uh, this is so boring. Uh, there's questions. I love you. <laughs> I don't think it was boring. Uh, Thank you. I mean, I think that's why. People right. want to hear about your process. What does but Jonathan have to say? So Jonathan was wondering, what was... Mm, you don't like his question? Well, <laughs> I shouldn't out his name. Why? I shouldn't have said his name. I think you're supposed to, Oh, right? am I? Yeah. Well, what was... It's not like his social. What was... What was the... No, it is a really good question, okay, actually. Okay, great. Good job, Jonathan. Yeah. And I like... It's, it's fun. What Get was in the there. best money you ever spent on your career? Oh, that is really good. I um, misread it. My first, first short film, actually, uh, it cost ten thousand dollars, and um, and I had saved that money, uh, not to make the short film. Actually, uh, the way I made my first short is I was working on this play, uh, Miss Julie August Strindberg. This cinematographer saw that play, really loved it, felt it was really photographic asked if I had considered working in film and I said yes and I'd written this short and I sent it to him and he was like, it's great, uh, let's make it. I have a camera, I have crew, we'll all work for free. And um, and then I, with a friend who had produced film before, put together a budget, that's what it cost. I was like, well, there's that. Um, but it was totally worth it because that short actually got into South By um, and I went there a few months later with that film and that feeling was an, unlike any feeling I'd experienced before and it really, the that small little piece of validation very much affected my trajectory for the last six years. So it was yeah. the best money I ever spent. My, and Michael Sarah. Aside from my full plastic surgery on my face. <laughs> um, Michael it's Sarah. It's Eat. It's on vice.com. It's actually on their YouTube channel. And on YouTube, but it's also on their uh, website. If you want to read really racist comments, I recommend it. Yeah, uh, don't, go, <laughs> don't look at the comments. They're if bummers. If you like YouTube trolls, it's a great space. Definitely a precursor. Uh, Next question. Anyway, I mean, and it also got, eat, Michael Sarah lo loved that short. And well, yeah, that's, and that's how, how we worked got. on, uh, that's how we ended up working on Gregory together, and he's in uh, my feature, Lemon, because Michael saw that. What was it like shooting at Bombay Beach? Oh, Bombay Beach is fantastic. That's the location of the Gregory Go Boom short. It's in the Salton Sea. It's uh, three hours away from here. Yeah, three hours away from here and like two hours away from uh, Mexico. It's really special. I highly recommend this documentary called Bombay Beach, actually, that is about that area. Um, it's 
unlike anywhere I had been um, a- after that, that the story of like how I arrived at making that short, we happened to be like on holiday soon after that in Palm Springs and went out there and I saw it and I was like, oh, this is where this exists. This the language of this film should live here and it feels pretty foreign and it feels really abandoned and it feels like Gregory is like a part of a, a part of an environment that has also been abandoned. Uh, so, yeah. Brian P. wants to know. Hey, Brian P., what's up? How do you transition from doing your own fully independent work, such as your short films, into... I understand what that means. Into... <laughs> <laughs> but I super appreciate the uh, breakdown. Uh... Uh, how do you transition from that into television and features? Um, how do you transition specifically from specifically television? Your own work because to I guess the, fe- the feature is independent. So I, it took a while to get to working in TV, and um, honestly, there was I met with people. I wanted to work in that space, and I kept being told, "Well, like you don't have any TV, so you can't work in TV." And I kept saying, "But someone didn't have TV before they worked in TV," and it's like unfortunately, like my face is not like the right face for those kinds of chances or risks. And I got very lucky uh, in that Donald Glover and Hiro Murai, who created Atlanta, the cinematographer they hired had sh- shot all of these shorts and. Donald happened to have seen them from online because they're online and he really loved them and they were going to invite one director to direct on the show because he directed two of the episodes and the other person he created it with directed uh, seven. Um, that's ten, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, cool. And um, And so that was really how I got that. And if not for him if not for them loving my work and their vote of confidence, I don't know, I think it would have, I would have made the feature and then I think the feature would have led to being able to work in the TV space. I do believe that, but I got there a little faster. I don't know, faster uh, is the right word, but I got there because those guys kind of like put their, uh, they put themselves on the line because they thought I could do it. Oh, you're going to ask hurt. a question from the audience? Didn't hurt you that. You're just going to shoot it out there. I feel it. You want it. Uh, we worked together at Funny or Die years ago when I used to be a costume designer, and he came and saw my play because I invited him to. I think I asked him and everyone I knew to come 75 times. And, uh, and he saw the play, and he's who was like, we should make something together. I would love to. I don't want to make things like I'm making. <laughs> and I was like, I'm great. Uh, so that's how we did that. What's your favorite thing about filmmaking? I was like, what's my favorite thing about myself? Um, well, uh, about filmmaking, my favorite thing is working with actors. Why? Uh, because that's the people I feel the safest with in that environment. Um, I think that... You know, like I said, theater is like my soul and my passion and I like can't, I can't wait to get back to uh, being able to direct in that space again. And the work with the actors is as close as I can get to replicating like what it is that I'm missing from theater. I get the, that like little like hit of, of like the tiny rehearsal or the like talking character, the talking like greater arc or where we're going, where we're coming from. Like that's the stuff that's super sexy to me because like I love rehearsal. And so that's like as close as you get to the rehearsal process is that one-on-one with your actors. Janixa, what projects are you working on next? Uh, I am, uh, <laughs> I was like, should I say that? I am working on a film with this company called Cinereach. Uh, they're fantastic. They made uh, this movie called Beasts of the Southern Wild, and then they made this film called Beach Rats, and mostly they're known for giving um, finishing funds to uh, films, filmmakers. They gave some money to Moonlight and some money to Diary of a Teenage Girl and tons of movies that you've seen and that you like or hate, I'm not sure. Um, They've like helped. Um, And so uh, I am working on a movie with them that is a dark comedy that takes place in Panama, which is where I'm from. Those are, well, there was one question, but it was on race and I think it was already asked, but 
I'll ask it again okay. just so this person has their question read. <laughs> There seems to be some subtle comments on race in your films, and your protagonists are neurotic white people. <laughs> Who Can asked you, that? Oh, they didn't include they their, didn't name. their name. <laughs> Can you? But they might have not known to put their name. Or they might have been like, don't want her finding me. Yeah. Can you talk about how you address race in your work? I feel like I got that. Yeah, you got that, right? Did you pass you the bad. other two cards because you didn't want to ask those questions? I asked every single question. Oh, okay, because I saw you. I didn't pass. I was just seeing if <laughs> I was asking the questions <laughs> in the right order. Oh, cool. Are, are we good? I think we're good. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much.